Welcome, this is the tutorial of the Partnership Engagement Fund application process. We will walk you through each step of the application and show you what it looks like to complete your application with feedback and tips along the way. Let's begin. You should have logged in and, and ended up on a page that looks similar to this. We've got some contact information at the top and then the button to start your application. If you are logging in for the first time, it might have jumped right to the start application screen. If you're logging in for a second time, one important thing to remember is if you started a project, you will find it down here in my applications, this section down here. Uh, you do not want to start another application. Uh, you'll just find it, click on the project and begin. But we'll start fresh with start application. To start your application, you're going to walk through the first two steps uh, before you see the full application to begin um, completing. So we're going to give our project a name, call it Awesome Project, uh, hit Save and Next, and that'll be the first step to beginning uh, the process. And then we're going to confirm your eligibility. You're going to walk through, and I'm going to read through uh, each of these questions, and it's important that you check each box, but be thoughtful about it before you check the boxes. Uh, we want to make sure that you meet the eligibility criteria for funding this project. So the first is funding is for a new project or expansion of existing programs. This is important to note. You can't just pay for ongoing operating expenses, uh, but this can be a new program uh, that you are endeavoring on or an expansion of something you're already currently doing, maybe expanding to a new part of Minneapolis, a new um, group of um, you know people that you're engaging, or maybe it's a you know a, a, a second level um, to engagement that you've been doing with um, a, a, a group of individuals. So it's newer expanded programming. This is not for general organization funding uh, or ongoing programming. So if you have a one staff person in a you know office building, we're not paying for that same staff person in office building for just the next year ahead. Uh, it's important to note. This project is exclusively for charitable or educational purposes. Uh, this can't be for a, a business or for your own personal benefit, uh, not, nothing like that. It should be for charitable or educational purposes, which is the requirements of the state for a um, uh, nonprofit organization. This project will ben not benefit a private or interest or individual. Similar to above, this is not for you personally to fix your um, home or start your business. This is not for a business itself uh, to further its, its uh, you know, uh, interest, uh, you know, or even for an organization to further its interest is to implement a project. This project activities will take place um, only in Minneapolis. Uh, if your organization's, you know, address is outside of Minneapolis, if you personally do live outside of Minneapolis, but do a, uh, are deeply connected to community here and doing work, that is okay. But we do want to emphasize that the activities of the project should be taking place in Minneapolis, uh, primarily or, you know, almost exclusively. This project is open to all residents, regardless of race, sex, sexual orientation, etc. This is just a non-discriminatory clause. Uh, we expect everyone to uh, not discriminate. And then I have read the program guidelines before starting my application. If you have not, the link is nicely over here on the right hand side. You can click that link and it'll open up a new window where you can read the program guideline. They should be reviewed before starting your application. This is both so that you have a really good application, but also so you don't start the process and find out uh, or realize that your project is not going to be eligible. So once you've checked those boxes, you can move on. Have you identified your neighborhood partner yet? Uh, if you have not, you can leave this blank, um, but we do, do know that this question will be asked at the end of the application too. Doing it now just allows us to know if you are um, looking for a neighborhood partner still, um, or if you've, you think you've already identified one and that'll help us be able to support you, um, similar to what was asked on the interest form. Uh, if you do not have yet have a neighborhood partner, NCR staff is available to support you in making a connection with a supportive neighborhood organization, uh, which you can click this link and find a list of the neighborhood organizations and you can begin reaching out to them yourself. We always recommend a brief email followed by a phone call, um, as well as considering attending one of the um, meetings that you might find at a neighborhood's website, calendar, etc. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to three or four different neighborhood organizations in the area, you know, or um, that you feel like are um, connected to the work you're trying to do uh, and, and start there. We'll be here to support you if we are able to. Last question, again, this is eligibility. We just want to make sure you are an organization under a $300,000 budget. If you're over $300,000, you're ineligible to apply. Um, we're going to just click that we're under three hundred one hundred and fifty, dollars And then you can hit save and next or check eligibility. And it will bring you. Uh, and if you are a small or group or individual, sorry on that last one, if you're a small group or individual, um, you are likely under $150,000 um, budget. So you can check, check that box. 
Congratulations, your application is eligible and you may proceed to complete the full application. You can hit confirm. Uh, from here on out, your application will autosave. You can see at the top here, you've got about the applicant, about the partnership, and about the project. Those are the three sections that you're going to be working through, and I'm going to walk you through that on the, the next step. We'll now start the about the applicant part of the application. The basic information at the top is self-explanatory. We want a mailing address, a phone number, a website. We already have your email address. And then we want to know um, what type of organization uh, or who is applying for funding. So as noted, if you're a 501c3, you should obviously check that box. If you're a group of residents who've gotten together but don't have a formal status or anything, you would be considered a community group. If you're an individual who has a project idea but you don't have a, a no official um, organization, you could check I'm an individual. One thing to keep in mind, while um, individuals and groups can complete the application, you will need to find a neighborhood partner who is able and willing to manage the contracting and administrative tasks to support the applicant. Um, or you could find some a fiscal agent. The, the thing to keep in mind is that you need to have somebody who is willing to contract with the city of Minneapolis. And a contract with the city of Minneapolis does require um, uh, insurance, uh, liability insurance. Um, and uh, a W-9, which means that you will, um, this will be shown on taxes. So if you're an individual, uh, you would want to talk to an accountant um, or a, somebody um, who helps you with your taxes to understand the implications of um, contracting directly with the city and receiving those fundings, funds directly because you will be taxed on those. Um, there's more to talk about there, but you would just check the box of the organization that, uh, or the one that best describes you. Depending on the box you check, there will be a couple other um, uh, questions down here. So I'm going to check 501c3 so folks can see the questions. Uh, tell us about your organization or group. This is just information for the review um, folks to know a little bit about your organization. You can provide links, you can give a description, uh, but there's a limit of 150 words. So just a little bit about your organization or group, how you got together, what your organization's focus is, your mission, etc. Uh, yeah, well, actually, mission is down here. What are your organization or group's mission and purpose? You can fill that in down here. How decisions are made in your group. This is really about, like, do you have a board of directors? Uh, is it, you know, consensus? Um, you know, do you engage the community? Like, how do you make decisions about the work that y'all are doing? And this is informative for the review committee to understand how the um, idea for your project came about. So. How are decisions made in your group um, is an important question. Uh, you don't necessarily need 150 words to answer, but we want some insight into those decisions. And then does the staff who manage this partnership program speak, read, and write fluently in the language of the targeted service community, if applicable? And if so, what language? Uh, this is really a simple question to ask. Uh, is, is the work you're doing in a language other than English? And do staff and or um, you know participants speak that language? Um, make sure we understand and are prioritizing organizations that are rooted in community um, and in those languages. Uh, there might be another box here later to name the specific languages, um, so keep that in mind. Is your organization currently involved in any city initiatives? So this is just a place for us to take note as a city staff. We're always curious if folks are plugged into other projects. There are several listed here on the right hand side, but there are probably plenty of other things. There's 50 boards and commissions. Um, there's um, other city initiatives that you might be a part of. And so just feel free to list those here. This is just informative for city staff to keep track of how folks are connected to and plugged into the city. This important question, who will be the city contractor approved for funding? This is where I mentioned earlier, if the applicant will contract directly with the city, so that is you as your 501c3 or individual or group are gonna be the ones to be signing the contract with the city. If so, you're gonna to need to look on the right-hand side, you're gonna to need to sign up as a city vendor. You're gonna, um, you don't have to have insurance until you are recommended for funding, but you should know um, and build in the expenses for the sort of legal and accounting requirements to contract with the city. You can find all that information over here. Um, or you are looking for a neighborhood partner that will be the contractor. If your neighborhood partner will be the contractor, please make absolutely sure that you've talked to your neighborhood partner about this, that they understand the implications, that you all um, understand the division of like administrative duties and, and how finances will be run. Um, but each of the, one of these boxes needs to be checked. So um, we're gonna check applicant for now so you can see some of the additional boxes that come up. Organization information. So if you check 5133, we particularly, we're going to ask her a few more questions. So we're going to want to know your organization name. Uh, depending on, on who is contracting, we're going to want to know the city vendor number. So that is um, the number that you will get when you fill out e-supplier up at the top or at this link here. Um, you'll want to put that in before you submit your application. If you're a 501c3, we'll want to know your tax ID number. Uh, 
you can upload your um, organization's annual budget here. Again, if you're a small um, group of individuals or an individual, if you don't have an annual operating budget, um, that's fine. You can leave this um, blank. Um, we leave these um, questions, these uploads optional, but do know that if you are recommended for funding as a, as a 501c3 or otherwise, um, we are going to ask for these documents before you're able to um, uh, contract directly. So same with the 501c3 um, documentation. So that would be a tax exempt letter or something along those lines. And then uh, we ask if you've received funding from prior partnership engagement funds. So just check the box if you have. And then uh, if you do check a box, you'll see an additional box come up about um, the amount of the past partnership funding um, received. Just this is information for our reviewers to, to know who's received past funding. And then we're asking right at the top, how much are you planning on requesting for funding? So you can put that number in here. We will ask for a budget at the end on the, about the project, but we just want to know and have it towards the top of how much you are requesting. You can request up to 25000 but we really encourage folks to ask for the amount necessary for the type of project you're planning on engaging in. Um, uh, 25000 is a lot of money for a small nonprofit who, or a small group of individuals who haven't done something like this before. So uh, we don't want to um, encourage folks to get in over their heads. So uh, that's the about the applicant section. We'll move on to the next section uh, shortly. This is the about the partnership section. This will ask some questions about the partnership. As noted in the um, info sessions and um, in the explanation, the partnership part of this is very specific. We are encouraging partnerships of all kinds, but the requirement of this application is to partner with a recognized neighborhood organization in Minneapolis. So we're gonna ask you a few questions just to narrow down a little bit about your project and then who your partner um, is. And so um, the first question is about where in Minneapolis your project will take place. So we have a map here that includes the, um, I believe it's uh, all the um, communities of Minneapolis. And these communities are larger sections of Minneapolis within which are a bunch of neighborhood organizations as you can see on the map here. If you click on this, you'll have a bigger map pop up. Um, I'm not gonna do that now, but you can use this map to reference. And we just wanna know where in Minneapolis your project will take place. So often folks reference um, sort of larger areas of Minneapolis. They say North or South or Northeast. Um, we are actually asking you to, and you can see the color coding, to be a little bit more precise. And it's okay if, if um, your project takes place in North Minneapolis to check both Camden and near North, um, or if it's more in this particular area to just check that one area, you know. So um, you might have project that takes place in all of Minneapolis. That's okay. Um, if you are, cent are more focused in one particular area, we really do want to um, note that. Um, but we really want you to check where your project specifically, you know, maybe where the location is, where you're drawing, um, you know, um, uh, attendance from, uh, or maybe where, you know, you're planning on partnering with neighborhoods from. So check some boxes uh, and then move on to the next question. <clears throat> this is the big and most important one uh, in this section, which is who is your neighborhood partner? And so this is the full list. You can start to type in um, uh, a name, but you just scroll down and you can find it here. And this is what's really important about this question. This is required um, to partner to, to partner with one of these recognized neighborhood organizations. So there's 70 in this list here. You might have heard of other organizations, but it is one of these neighborhood organizations that we are looking for you to partner with. So um, if you haven't made that partnership, you can reach out to those organizations as noted. Um, we can help you um, identify one, but we are looking for a, a neighborhood organization that's gonna partner with you. Um, this is required, again, I'll emphasize, and it is really important that you have made contact with that neighborhood organization. So uh, in doing so, we ask for a contact email. We are gonna just check in with them um, when we're, if you're recommended for, uh, for funding, uh, we will reach out to that neighborhood organization just to confirm. But uh, basically we wanna make sure that you've had conversation with that neighborhood and not just planning on if you um, receive funding for the project. And what that partnership looks like, this is also important in that conversation with the neighborhood organization. We are looking for you to identify sort of what that involvement of that neighborhood partner will be. So are they serving as a collaborative partner on the project? Are they doing administrative kind of um, role? Are they serving as your fiscal sponsor and contractor with the city? That as noted on the, um, about the applicant section is if they're gonna be the contractor and you're gonna subcontract from them. If you click other here, which plenty of folks will hit other, these are not um, you know all encompassing. Uh, we ask that you just describe the role your neighborhood partner will play in your project in a, in a real brief sentence right here. Um, because in the next section, we're gonna ask you to describe a little bit more. 
how will your partner organization support this project? So we want just a narrative, a little bit more of an explanation of, you know, the neighborhood organization will promote this project by um, attending our events. Um, some of the staff will attend our events or the board's going to plan on attending our events or, you know, the neighborhood organization is going to promote our project in their newsletter and um, the neighborhood organization is going to offer a space to meet in. Um, uh, or it could be much more involved. The neighborhood organization and, and our staff are going to, you know, do door knocking together and reach out to residents together and host meetings together. Um, whatever it is that is descriptive is what you'd want to put here. And then we want to know just uh, a little bit of how will this partnership continue after this program. This doesn't have to be set in stone. We don't hold you to this, but we want folks to be thinking about what does partnership look like beyond the funding from this, this project, right? Um, what, how does that relationship continue to develop um, if it does uh, and, and what you think that might look like? Um, there's not a right or wrong answer. Um, it could look as simple as, you know, we'll check in on an annual basis to share some of the work that we're doing. Um, or it could be, you know, more involved. We're going to start to, you know, meet monthly um, as staff to think about like where our collaboration can can lie for for future funding and future projects. Um, obviously, at the start of this project, you don't absolutely know, but we want you to be thinking about it. And then last, you have a letter of support or agreement from your neighborhood partner. So we do um, like this, an email from the, you know, if you just hit email with them and they say, hey, yeah, we're, we're supportive, you can upload that. It doesn't have to be a formal letter. Um, but just know that if you are recommended um, for funding, we will be looking for um, some sort of a official documentation of support. So not in required on your March 3rd by your application deadline, but um, would be required in a month or two if we say that you were recommended for funding. Um, and that... Uh, is the about the partnership section. We'll move on to the about the project. This is the final piece and obviously the most important. This is about the project that you are asking and um, submitting for funding uh, for the partnership and getting the fund. So we're going to ask you a handful of questions and then get into the details of the project description. First, we want to know about the communities being served. Uh, we have a non-exhaustive list, so you can feel free to check um, some of the boxes here. Um, we do ask that you limit it to up to five primary. We don't need you to check every single box. We know that, um, uh, as we noted at the beginning, this is a non-discriminatory, um, you know, uh, um, project funding, uh, and you know, we want you to be open and accessible to all. And we know that many projects, given the equity focus and uh, engaging historically underrepresented communities, uh, we want you to be thoughtful about like um, the communities that you're maybe more deeply connected to. Um, or doing work in, and you can identify those here. Um, many groups like to click other and can open up, uh, specify which additional communities, and you can note that. Um, if you do check that box, you know, limit this to, to four so that we um, have some way of being a little more precise. So um, now we get into the, the project itself. Describe your project in three to five sentences. Give an overall description of the project you are seeking funding for. Uh, we give you 300 words, but we do really encourage you to limit it to, um, you know, about five sentences. We want that high-level summary of what your project is um, planning on accomplishing. So this will be what goes into your, what's called scope of service, or the, the description of your project within the contract with the city, should you be recommended for funding. So you can look at examples of um, scopes of service uh, on our, our website. Um, uh, as a way to give you some idea of, of the kinds of descriptions that, that have gone in, in past projects. So three to five sentences, high level summary of what it is that your project is going to entail. Explain your project's public purpose. So this is an important one. Uh, if you don't know what public purpose is, we would really encourage you to um, click this link and read the program guidelines. Um, either of these will lead to the program guidelines where you can uh, find in the the PDF document that describes um, program guidelines a, a more detailed description of what public purpose is. But essentially it means <clears throat> what is the benefit to the public, as this is city um, public dollars, uh, what is the benefit to the project, um, public, um, that your project um, impacts? You know, how does it impact, you know, individuals from the community uh, that benefit the public as a whole? Um, and so um, we want you to really think about that and then explain your project with um, that in mind. How does it serve uh, the public good to um, accomplish the outcomes that you're hoping to accomplish through your project? <clears throat> the next question, how many individuals where your project will benefit? Um, 
will your project better fit? If your project limits the number of participants, share how you select who from your community participates. So just briefly on this one, uh, if you have a sense of how many individuals you think your project will impact, some projects, and there's not a right or wrong answer, some projects go really deep. So you engage, you know, 10 to 20, um, you know, adults on, uh, as we had one, you know, last year on a particular, learning a particular skill, um, job training, CPR training, uh, leadership development, um, you know, we think we'll engage about 20 individuals and we don't have capacity to do more than that. Um, if you do have limited capacity, then we want to know how you're going to limit the number of participants. So, you know, is it first come, first serve? Do you have an application process? Um, what is what is the determination for how you um, select community participants? How do you advertise it? Obviously, we want it to be publicly advertised. We want it to be accessible. Um, and, uh, and we want you to have a process that is non-discriminatory. Um, other projects might be much more wide ranging. We're going to do a, you know, a series of, of community events where we can, you know, have an audience of 100 or 200 or 300. And um, if so, you're in, you know, you might individually, how many individuals you might um, put a thousand that you might hope to um, engage. And then if you're not limiting the number of participants, if anybody can walk in the door and participate, most likely, then you don't need to um, explain that part of it. So as we were asking, how many individuals will your project benefit? And then we're to project deliverables. And again, this is where I would encourage you to look at past examples. You can click here for examples of, of um, uh, previous projects deliverables um, or outcomes as we call them as well. Um, but this is just a list uh, of what, what will be delivered by your project. These are similar to goals or outcomes and should be SMART. And if you've heard before, SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And so um, with that, we want you to describe and we want you to use um, uh, line by line. So you can see the, the um, editing bar here. We're going to encourage you to use the dots, which um, bullets, which allows us or does it by just providing a star at the beginning and, and it'll show up as a bullet list for us. But, um, you know, we want you to write um, a deliverable uh, one and then hit enter and deliverable two, so on and so forth. You can, uh, I would encourage at least three to five deliverables. You can have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, um, but these are real specific outcomes. So these are similar to um, who might benefit or how my, folks might benefit. We're going to, you know, um, teach 20 individuals um, civic leadership skills um, through a series of workshops uh, in the Camden neighborhood, uh, you know, in the summer of 2025. Something like that would be uh, a deliverable, a specific, it's measurable, um, it's achievable by your project, and it, and it has sort of a time constraint to it. Um, we're going to host a series of um, events sharing uh, some of the history of the neighborhood, and um, we've had one that engages around racial covenants, and um, we're going to engage uh, residents in this particular area um, about that history um, through a series of workshops something like that. Um, again, look for examples of the past list. That's a really good way to get a sense of what these um, are. And there should be at least um, at least three, um, if not more. Uh, a good example that everybody can include, and you could just really just copy and paste this in. Uh, everybody has a neighborhood partner through this project. So we encourage you to um, report out to the neighborhood partner at the end of the project. Um, you might also report or promote the project um, to the neighborhood organization as one of your outcomes, but this could be an easy one everybody could include at the end. Uh, that's the main bulk of it. Now we're at like, what is the timeline for your project? So keep in mind that your project contract will be set up to go through the end of 2025. So there are 18 month contracts, they'll begin around June and they'll go through June uh, to the end of 2024, but also all of 2025. So keep that in mind as you're planning your project, you have this, you know, maybe some of this summer, fall, um, but and then all of 2025 to do and complete your project. If your project completes early, that's perfectly fine. So you might say that I'm going to be done, you know, um, uh, by 12, uh, 2024. Um, but that is not required. It just gives us a sense of, of when and how um, you plan on implementing your project. Um, so give us a little bit of a, you know, a timeline. Most folks, you know, you could do 6, 2024 to uh, 12, 2024, something like that, or, tw or 12, 2025. So it can look either way. 
And then we're on to project budget. So this is the last section that we're gonna walk through and it's, uh, it's not, we're trying to make it a little bit less complicated, but we do want you to really understand. So again, I will emphasize if you haven't looked at the project um, guidelines, that would be a really helpful resource. This budget should only include funds you will spend for your partnership engagement fund projects. So these are only the dollars that you are asking from the city to contract. There is the option for an additional narrative at the bottom and an overall project budget, um, including funds from other sources. You can upload that um, later. But um, for now, we're really focused and trying to keep it limited to um, just a high level budget. We will ask for a more detailed budget if you're recommended for funding. Um, so I want to give you a, a sense of what this is going to look like this year. Instead of listing out every single contractor um, or staff member that you're planning on, on hiring, we want you to just stay high level. So this might be, you know, three um, uh, frontline um, staff and youth, um, uh, you know, uh, youth uh, stipends, you know, youth interns, let's call. Um, that might be what you're um, putting there. And you're going to budget, you know, twelve thousand dollars for for the staffing. Supplies again, please take a look at the guidelines. Um, supplies cannot be things like, um, um, you know, laptops and, a, and equipment that is long lasting, but it can be um, consumable goods. So uh, it could be, you know, um, notebooks for the the youth that are getting trained. It could be. Um, uh, event supplies for kind of a, a one-time event or things that might be used over the course of the year. So um, we're going to just call this event supplies, high level, and I'm going to put $1,200 in there. Um, as you can see, as we're filling this out, uh, the total will increase over here. So you're looking at, if I wanted to submit for $20,000, I'm going to try to shoot for this being a total of $20,000. Um, administration of project, this should stay under 10% ideally, but this could include um, if you're contracting with a neighborhood organization and they are the ones that are managing the contract, they might um, ask for an administrative fee for the, the work that they're doing or the cost that they have. So you might have um, neighborhood um, and admin, you know, costs that you might have some time that you're going to be doing paperwork. And that should be no more than 10% of your overall budget. So something around let's say $2,000 for a $20,000 um, project here. So I put $2,000. Uh, and then rental. So this is uh, important to keep in mind again. Uh, this should not be for the ongoing costs for your office or your you know, phone or internet for your just organization overall. But if this is as part of your project, you are renting out some space for the next you know, six to 18 months um, or you are renting sound equipment um, for some of the events that you're putting on. This would be where you, you know, tables and chairs for, you know, a handful of events. This is where you put in, um, you know, um, th those types of um, things. So um, let's say we were renting um, uh, event rentals. Let's just do, we're going to rent some tables and chairs and, and awnings and stuff for a few events that we're putting on. So I'm going to put $1,800. Uh, we're at $17,000. Oh, I apologize. We did separate out the neighborhood fee and the um, admin fee. So maybe we put um, admin um, there, neighborhood here. And let's just put $1,000 in each of those. Um, and then we're at food. And this is really important. Again, we've got the links down here. Read all this um, information about how to complete your budget. But we have a food, beverage, and gift card guidelines. And so this is really important to note. You cannot spend money on gift cards. That's a, just an important thing for everybody to know up front. You can spend money on food. It should be less than 5% of your total project budget. And it needs to be for public events specifically. So um, we can talk more through that um, um, uh, event food, we'll just call it, for this one. And like I said, 5%. So for this, it would be $1,000, no more than $1,000 for, for food for a, for a $20,000 project. Um, and then, uh, you know, you might have just other expenses. Uh, you should note what those are. Um, for now, I'm just going to put miscellaneous and put $2,000. So we get to our example where you can see we have $20,000 in the budget. So that is how you fill out the um, overall project um, budget application. Um, you can know more detail if you have them for your youth, um, or for your, sorry, for your staffing um, or supplies. You can note those kind of things in the budget narrative here, this section, um, or you could upload an overall project budget if you already, if you might be getting, you know, $20,000 from another foundation or elsewhere, you can put that in the overall project budget uh, um, document and you can upload a, you know, a spreadsheet or whatever else you would choose um, to this section. Um, so these are where you can give further explanation. For now, um, we're focusing here where you just stick to the categories listed 
um, and and the um, short descriptions uh, and the total amounts. Most important thing we'd like for you to consider is that this total amount that you're requesting here matches the total amount at the um, you know beginning of the project when you said how much um, you're planning on applying for, um, and and that'll help us just make sure <laughs> that we give you and approve the right amount of funding for your project. Uh, and I will walk through the last part of this, and that is just the, there's the budget section we just talked about, overall project budget, and then just additional documents. If there's anything else that you feel like would help us understand your project um, that, you know, could include some kind of a, you know, a, a newsletter you might have put together or, a, you know, a previous, you know, um, thing or maybe a collection of photos, um, you can upload a document here um, that could um, maybe share a little bit more about your project. We try to keep this open-ended. And uh, if you you can use a tool, this is just one example, but something to save and merge documents into a single PDF. That's what we would prefer that you um, do is, is put everything together in one document and submit it here. If you are good with everything that you've done, uh, look it all over. You can always hit save uh, and close at any point and come back to this. Uh, your application will be saved here. Uh, you'll be able to download a, a PDF of it to review it if you would like to. Um, you can come back in here and hit edit. You can preview it. Um, all of that is available. And then uh, when you are ready, you will hit submit uh, that final button. Uh, if we were doing it again, you can hit submit application and you will be good to go. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. But that is the tutorial uh, and thank you for your time.